Whoa. Okay, that was awesome. Thank you guys so much. As a Longhorn fan, I'm excited to meet you guys next week. So <laughs> we actually get a chance this time. Y'all are fixing. Y'all are fixing to. Y'all are fixing to use us as scrimmage. Practice, I'll tell you what. We'll see. We'll see. Um, and, and anybody who wants to join the Longhorn, I'm just kidding. Just playing. All right. Sorry, I know, I had to give it a chance. Okay, um, today uh, I'm glad and thankful that you guys uh, come and joined us for worship today. We're going to be in Psalm chapter 23, Psalm chapter 23, so meet me there. Um, I want to just say I'm thankful for this opportunity to be here. Uh, thank you, Pastor Chris, for this opportunity to preach and uh, to open God's word together. So uh, Psalm 23, if you guys would stand together, we're going to read uh, this passage and um, jump right in. It says this, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's pray. Lord, we're grateful today for this opportunity to come into your presence, to hear of who you are, and to understand that, God, you're the one who's our shepherd, the king of the universe, the Lord of all. God, humble us this morning. Help us to understand what this means. Help us to understand what, who you are uh, and who we are in light of that. Lord, we love you so much, and I just pray that you would lead this now. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you. Oh, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. It's in your name we pray. Amen. We're going to be looking today at Psalm 23. Psalm 23. And um, you may have heard this psalm before. It may be familiar to, to you already. Um, it is very familiar, um, often one of the uh, uh, most well-known psalms here, uh, but we see here that, that David uh, is a king, and uh, he's looking back on his life, he's looking back at all, uh, all the ups and downs of life, and he's seeing, hey, the Lord has been my shepherd the whole time, I shall not want. I shall not want. It, he looks back at the ways that, that God has led him. How he's made him lie down in green pastures. He's led him beside still waters and how he's restored his soul. He's looking at how he's led him in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He's looking back and saying, hey, even though I was in the valley, uh, in the valleys of life, man, the shadow of death was around me. I will fear no evil for you are with me. He's looking at how God has been with him the whole way. And then he's seeing how, man, the Lord has prepared a table before him. Even in the presence of his enemies, he's blessed him. He's been with him through the wars, through the battles, through the, the, the circumstances of life. And then he says in verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Can anybody attest to this in your life? Can you look back and say, man, the Lord is good. He's been with me through it all. Maybe some of you would say, it hasn't been the way I thought it would go, but he's been there. Maybe, I don't know how it would look for you, but I, I, I could attest that in my own life. I've only, I'm only 30, but man, the Lord is good. The Lord is good, and he's been faithful this whole time. And so uh, today, as we're going to look at this psalm, I, the challenge that the Lord just laid on my heart for this is that you, you wouldn't just read this psalm for you at the center of it with you in, in, the, in the focus of this thing. That you would say, hey, look at all the blessings. Look at the ways he's going to bring me rest. Somebody's in here like, I just need a nap, all right? 
Maybe you're like looking at this. He's made me lie down in green pastures. He's leading me beside still waters. You're like, hey, we're going to talk talking about being restored and having a nap today. But if we read that in our perspective, maybe it looks like, hey, we're going to go lay on the couch and take a nap. But hey, this, this is God's perspective we're going to look at. Sometimes we can look at this and say, hey, this is how he's going to lead me through life. He's going to help me make all the decisions I need to make. He's going to do this. But no, it says for his name's sake. We're going <laughs> to, we may re- read this and say, oh no, there's evil to come. Or maybe there's valleys that are going to happen. And maybe we read something about the table in verse 5. We're like, ooh, food. All right, okay. But we can read this and have this center, this focus on us. And even we can take verse 6 and say, hey, surely mer- goodness and mercy are going to follow me all the days of my life. And we can look at that and think, this is, he's going to make me awesome. But today, I want to urge you to not read this with you at the center, with us that are, we're just tempted to say, this is about me. This is how he's going to bless me. This is how my life is going to be. But I want you to look today with God at the center, with the Lord at the center of this thing. The reason that these blessings came in David's life, but were not because he had it together. Because if you look at his life, he didn't. But the reason was because of the Lord. The Lord was with him. Makes me think of Matthew 6, But seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. And what is your focus? Who is your shepherd today? The promise here is that we get the Lord. The promise is the Lord. And guys, that is so much more than enough for us. We get to follow the Lord. He is our shepherd, and if that's, it says this simply, I shall not want. If we have the Lord, we have everything we need. Maybe you guys could attest, man, maybe the, the, the way of life hasn't gone the, same, the way that I thought, but you know what? The Lord's been good. The Lord's in the middle of it, and that's what I want us to cling to when I'm learning to cling to myself. But this promise here is the Lord And I want to just look at why this is a good thing for us today. And it's simply because of who the Lord is. So I'm going to take us through to four or five passages today and just look at who our God is, who the Lord is. All right, so are y'all ready? All right, let's go. Okay, Genesis 1-1. So Genesis 1-1, maybe you have this memorized already, but it simply says this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He is the creator. God is the source of life. God is at, was at the beginning. He is what this thing is all about. I'm gonna, just, the Lord's been ringing this in my, in my head. God is the main character. God is the main character of all of life. We're tempted to make it about us, but it is all about him. If we miss that, we miss so much. God is the source of life, and he's the sustainer. This is about him. And this is the one who's our shepherd, the one that this is all about, the one who is the source of life, and the one who sustains it. It is from him. It is him who walks with us, who guides us, who leads us. This is our shepherd. This is about him. Then I want you guys to turn to Psalm chapter 8. Psalm chapter 8. So we see that God is the creator and Psalm chapter 8 fleshes this out a little bit more for us. It says this in Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, How majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes. To still the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. 
And you have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beast of the field, the birds of the heavens, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. We see here, the psalm just explains, this thing again is about God. In all of the earth, it's his name. That's majestic. In all of the heavens, it's, it's his name, and his glory that's known. And he uses in verse 2, it talks about how he uses the mouths of babies and infants. He uses weakness in the world to proclaim his strength, to show who he is. And what's crazy is it says this in verses three and four, when I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, verse four is huge. What is man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you care for him. This magnificent God, this majestic, amazing, holy God wants to use us to proclaim his glory. And guys, we don't even compare. I don't really have the words to explain this, but we do not compare to the majestic God that we serve, that we get to know. I hope that you know this today. This is is not some privilege that we, we have as humans to come into God's presence and to worship him. It's because he's given us the opportunity to know him. He is amazing. And as I explain it to Ben, I'll tell tell you this way. He's really, really big, all right? He's really big. He's infinite, holy, set apart, and almighty. And these words are just, just a little bit of who he is. And the fact that he is mindful of us and the fact that he lets us bear his image is just something that I hope just humbles you. The God of the universe put his image on you and in you and through you to share who he is. What else could we do? Why wouldn't we live for him? Why wouldn't we trust him? Why wouldn't we seek him and follow him? I hope today that you understand just who he is or get a glimpse of this. And I've just been reminded that this is... This sermon is, about, is a faith-filled one because only the God can help us to get our eyes on him. We, I wake up every day tempted to say, hey, what's this, what can I do? What can I gain? I feel tired. I feel this way. But man, <laughs> the thing is not about me. It's not about us. And when we make it that way, we miss everything. So I hope that you understand this opportunity that this majestic and holy and glorious and worthy God gives us today. We don't even compare, but he helps us to see who he is. And just a reminder, this is our shepherd. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter (laughs) 6. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. So we've seen that God is creator, the source of all of life. He is what this thing is all about. We've seen that his name and glory are amongst all of the earth and somehow he cares for us and wants to use us. In Isaiah 6, we're going to see his holiness. So let's look at Isaiah 6, verses 1 through 7. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple, and above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings, with with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. 
the whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and he said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. (laughs) Through Isaiah's picture vision here, we get a glimpse into God's throne room. Get a glimpse of who he is sitting on his throne in heaven. High and lifted up, it says, and it says that the train of his robe fills the temple. So can you imagine this in in here? He fills this place up with his glory, showing, man, he's holy. He's holy. And he had the seraphim. Each had six wings. Two covered their face because they could not look at the holiness of God. Two covered their feet because this is just this lowly part of us. And with two he flew and they called and they said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And in response to this, the, the place shakes. It's filled with smoke at God's glory, at God's holiness. And Isaiah has the right response. In seeing God's holiness, he says, woe is me. Who am I? Who am I to stand in his presence? For I am lost and I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Isaiah got it right. He said, I see this holy God and all I can see is, man, I'm close to him and all I see is my sin in me. I cannot stand in his presence. I don't deserve this chance. Who am I to be here? Humbled, humbled. Just think of this, and again, that we have this chance to have this God as our shepherd. This holy, holy, holy God walking with us and talking with us. But I hope really what comes of this is that you would see, man, I am sinful. Who am I to be in his presence? Man, I I don't deserve to stand before him. Who am I to get to speak his name, to get to make him known, to get to, to have him as mine? This is a hard thing to talk about because we make this again like about us we want to we want to be all about us and focus it on us but the truth is is that God is holy and it's all about him do you live every day that like this that it's all for him it's all about him or not so much this is our shepherd Let's flip to one more passage in Colossians 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 through 20. Colossians 1, 15 through 20. It says this, talking about Jesus here. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead that in everything he might be preeminent. So get this here. 
Jesus is God in the flesh, the image of the invisible God, the fullness of God dwelling in human form. And it says here that he is the firstborn of creation, meaning not that he's our, the first ever to be born, meaning that he is Lord over creation. He makes it and he sustains it and holds it together. And then it says that he's the firstborn from the dead. He is Lord over the grave. Don't forget, he resurrected. He took that spot, and so it says that he's the Lord of the living and the dead, he, that he might be preeminent. He's number one, all right? As some, somebody would quote SpongeBob, right? He was number one, all right? That's what it said. Then this is what it's all about. Jesus is number one. And then it says in verse 19, for in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And then in verse 20, it says this is what he does with his lordship. Get this. And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. All right? This God, this Lord, this King, reigning and ruling over all things, cares for us. He makes peace with us. By the blood of his cross. By his gospel. That he came down into human form. He lived perfectly. He even obeyed his parents' kids. All right, it's amazing. He didn't lie, he didn't steal. But he kept God first and foremost, pleased him in every moment, every way. He was perfect. And then he took our place on the cross. He died. The perfect sacrifice for us. Three days he was buried. It says that he rose from the grave. He's preeminent. First and foremost, but he died for us. He made peace with us. Because just like Isaiah, we unless he he came and he brought the burning coal and touched our lips, unless he atoned for us, we cannot stand in God's presence. We would be lost, we would be dead apart from him. But God, He made peace with us. He made the first move. Uh, He came down. We don't have to work to God to be holy like him. But he said, hey, I'm coming to you. I'm going to make the move so that you can be with me. He's that good. He's that holy and that loving. And all that he is gracious and merciful. He did this for us. He cares for you. He cares for you. This is our Shepherd, (laughs) this is our shepherd. All right, now flip back to Psalm 23. You guys are like, what happened to that? Psalm 23. This Lord is our shepherd. This Lord is our shepherd. And because of him, we shall not want. If you look at every, the beginning of every one of these sentences, they start with who he is. He provided. He led. He restores. He is with us. It's all rooted in him. Because this Lord is creator. He is all powerful. He is holy. And this Lord cares for us. And so today, just these application what we should, how I think we should come out of this and read, really, this scripture and read all of the Bible is that we, first off, should be humbled. Humbled at the opportunity that the king of the universe, the creator of all and sustainer of all would say, hey, I want to know you. I've given you my image to use you in this world. Man, we should be humbled at this opportunity. We did not earn it. We did not deserve it. But he has given us this chance. Do you know this opportunity? 
Have you tasted and seen yet that the Lord is good in your life and the opportunity that it is to be his, to worship him, to get our eyes on the king? Secondly, besides being humbled, we should be thankful. Again, this is not our own doing. We are sinners. We make this about ourselves. We pull an Adam and Eve most every day. We say, hey, I want what I want, God. Are you sure that your way is going to bring life? We question And yet God has come after us and he is patient. And like we sang, he's a good father who wants to know us. And even the one who laid down his life for us. We should be thankful for this opportunity. Thankful for the chance to come and to worship him. Thankful for the chance to to read his, his word. Thankful for the chance to walk with him and to follow him. To obey to get to share the gospel with somebody else so that they might know who he is. I know we see so often the obedient commands in in scripture as a burden, but guys, think about it this way. We didn't, like, we, we get to make known who he is. We get this opportunity to read his Bible. We get the opportunity to follow him. Man, are you thankful? And then thirdly here, Holy, 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 and the Lord cares for us. Man, it's possible to believe these things. You can't. You mean, I can can battle with sin and, and say no? I'm sinning against the king of the universe? And it's, we are able to obey, these, obey this and believe it. Not because we're at the center, but because God is. Because of who he is, we can trust him. By the way, his word has never failed. <laughs> when his word goes out, it does not return void. We can believe him. So I'm going to ask the the band to come back up, and we're going to respond right now. But I want to ask you today just simply this, who's your shepherd? Who's your shepherd? Maybe today you've come in here, and you've been trying to shepherd your life. You've been trying to make it carry it all, provide for yourself, do everything that's needed so that you can be good for others, you can satisfy other people, you can uh, even be good enough for God. But I hope today, by God's grace, that you, you would understand and know, and maybe you already do, man, I can't carry this thing. I can't do this. I can't follow God. I can't carry all the things of this world. I cannot be good enough. That's actually God's grace in you. And you would see the end of yourself and you would see the end of your sin. And that you would understand, where else can I go? Only he has the words of eternal life. Only Jesus has made a way for me. Only the good shepherd has laid down his life even while I was still a sinner. So today, maybe you're in here and you're like, I never trusted Christ. I, he, I don't even know what this looks like. Or maybe for the like, 20th time you've heard this and it finally clicked, man, I am not the one in control and I need him. I just urge you, we're going to give you a time to respond in just a moment. We'll, I'll have our pastors here. Um, but I just urge you, this is what it looks like. That surrender is open-handed. It says two things. Number one, God, I give up. <laughs> I don't got this. I don't got this. My way ends in death. Number two, it says this, I surrender to you. You have your way. I trust you. Today, maybe you just need to take that step 
And we want to help you do that today. And church, maybe today you're just reminded of who God is. And in this time, you would just say, man, you're worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. Who am I to stand before you? Who am I to worship you? I know my sin. I know my thoughts. Who am I? Maybe you just respond in worship today to the one true king. Surrender to him. But we're going to stand right now and we're going to respond to him. So stand with me. Let's do that.